Friday, YouTube. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving last week. Here is my reading update for this week. What I read this past week, I read the second volume of the new um, Deadpool. I can't open it because it's pretty profane, but I'm still really enjoying this. I have the next one on hold, so it's good. I read Horns by Joe Hill. Joe Hill is Stephen King's son um, and a successful author in his own right. Horns was super awesome. Um, I saw that a lot of people didn't really like Horns. I think the main complaint was that the characters were not very well developed, they said, or they were kind of vague, but that was the exact same reason that I really loved Horns, because you never, you couldn't just trust what you were reading, you never really knew what was going on, um, and I thought that that just made it really interesting. Also, I'm a super gullible reader, so <laughs> there was a lot of um, twist in this story that I bought into every single time, so this was really good. I read the new Frederick Bachman, Bachman. My grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. Um, I was really skeptical of this. A lot of people um, really loved A Man Called Ove was Frederick Bachman's um, novel before this one. I think it might have been his first novel. I'm not sure. This He's a Swedish. I want to say he's Swedish. He's a Swedish author, so everything that we get has been translated. Um, everybody really loved A Man Called Ove. I really loved A Man Called Ove. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that I read somewhere that it's supposed to be pronounced Ove or something, that I'm pronouncing it wrong. Anyway, um, so I decided to check this out, even though a lot of people said it wasn't as good. I completely disagree. A Man Called Ove was different than this, but very good, and this is very good in its own right. It's about a little girl who her grandmother is her best friend, and well, I don't want to spoil it, but um, it's all about the stories, the fairy tales that her grandmother makes up um, to tell this girl who is kind of bullied and a loner and she just doesn't fit in. Um, yeah, it's about those stories and, and how the little girl finds out that they were, these stories were taken from real life events in her grandmother's life. I actually gave both of those books, Horns and My Grandmother, blah, 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 five stars on Goodreads, so I definitely recommend them. I think everyone should read them. I read Beach House to my boys this last week. This is a, um, it's an illustrated poem um, all about going to the beach and, um, you know, when you're the long drive and hanging, having to unpack and, and, you know, everyone has to eat lunch before you can go to the beach and it was cute. It was about, you know, what you do at the beach. It was very cute. We go to the beach a few times a year because we're only three hours from the coast. Um, my boys really enjoy the beach, so this was cute. And we don't usually read poetry, so it was a good change of pace. We also read Dragons Love Tacos. I was super annoyed with this book at first. And then at the very end, it got really cute, so I guess I forgive it. Um, and it, it's, it's all about how dragons love tacos, but if you give them anything spicy in the tacos, that's what makes them breathe fire. So that's, I don't know, it's funny. But um, it's very repetitive, and the, even halfway through the book, and it's a children's book, it's not that long. Even halfway through the book, I it started to feel like taco wasn't even a real word anymore. You know that feeling. Uh, the word taco appears like at least twice on every single page and I was just like oh my god please let this end this is what happens when you feed dragons spicy tacos funny so anyway at the end my son thought it was really funny my two-year-old keeps telling everyone that dragons love tacos so that's cute and I think I ended up giving it three stars I'm currently halfway through The White Queen by Philippa Grigory. I believe that there is a, a, a TV show now based on this series by her. This is about the Plantagenets that were the ruling family in England before the Tudors took power. I hope I said that right. I pronounce everything wrong, you guys. That's like the mark of a huge reader, loner person. But anyway, um, so there's a show based on this series and um, the events that took place before the Tudor house, um, and, and the War of the Roses was the, the Lancasters versus the York side of the family. 
Um, I haven't watched the show yet. I wanted to read the books first. So far, this is really good. Um, one complaint that I have read is that it kind of feels like reading a history textbooks, textbook in some parts, and I agree with that. I think that's true. If you are a huge history buff or you're kind of obsessed with um, old English royalty like I am, it's embarrassing, um, maybe you won't find those parts that annoying. I don't find them that annoying. This is written in a very mm, unique voice to me. It's it's written in the first person past tense, so it's kind of like reading a diary, but it's not written in diary format, if that makes sense. So the main character has a very unique voice. It's very interesting to see things, you know, historical events play out um, from a first person perspective. But as with a lot of things, if you don't love um, historical fiction, you're probably not going to love this. I love historical fiction. I'm loving this. My two read pile this week is really tall because uh, I'm a sucker. Even though I did not like the collection of novellas that precede um, the Throne of Glass, the first Throne of Glass book, I didn't like it. I didn't finish it. I gave it one star. I DNF'd it, I think. Um, I got suckered into trying the first book anyway. <laughs> So the reason my to, be read, my to be read pile is so large is because I'm going to try Throne of Glass. I'm going to give it 50 pages. If I don't love it, I'm going to DNF this too. I have book four of The Walking Dead I'm going to read this weekend. My husband and I are reading these at the same time. We're really dumb and even though we take out, you know, like 20 books from the library every week, we share a library card. So we're reading these at the same time, and my husband just passed me up. He finished book four already and ordered books five and six, so now the pressure is on. Um, I have The Orphan Train. I'm definitely going to read this um, this coming up week because this is still a very popular book, has a lot of hype, and there's a lot of holds on it, so it's now or never. If I happen to finish all of that, I have... The Ungodly. This is an older book with not great reviews, but I got to wikiing the Donner Party. Um, that's this was like way, way back in the day. Um, way back in the day, the Donner Party that got trapped up in the mountains trying to make it to California. I think it was. I'm probably so wrong. I'm not a history buff, okay? But anyway, so they got trapped and there was cannibalism and da 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 da. da. This is a fictional account of what happened. So I'm going to try this, even though it's got kind of not so good reviews. Another reason my pile is so large is because I'm afraid that this might get, this might get DNF'd too. <sighs> and then I have the second, is this the second? Oh my gosh. Yes, second, I see the two. Okay, the second volume of Deadly Class. This is the comic about um, in the 80s assassins, kids that are becoming assassins in sort of an underground academy kind of situation. Um, I think this was the one that I said I don't really like the art, but the story is interesting and different enough that I'm going to keep going as long as I can. Okay, that is my reading for this past week and this coming up week. Let me know down below, are you a booktuber? Um, Link me your booktube because I need more people to talk about books with. Have a good weekend, YouTube. Bye-bye.